Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be making some undulating waves. Oh yes, we are making waves. Good for hair, comet trails, very artistic things. I don't really know. Maybe like this example where it's a comet, turns into a ghost, maybe a ghost with hair. I don't know. Just trying to show what we can do with these techniques. These are actually pretty old time techniques. They predate shape layers. So hopefully you enjoy this little blast from the past. Let's fire up After Effects and wave hello to some sine waves. Oh boy. That's a pun. So the tutorial starts now. Before we jump into the tutorial, if you have trouble with this thing, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you through. And if you want to download the project file, the thing that we're going to be making here, go to evanabrams.com, follow links in the cards, the description, get your hands on that. So those are the two things I'll say. And now it's time to get into the tutorial. We're looking at this weird space head guy floating around, got a sweet skullet, excellent beard. That's kind of the look that I'm easing myself into as I get older. And uh, all that to say is that uh, this technique that we're gonna be using is fairly old, but we're gonna update it with some shape layers and we're gonna update it using something called master properties, which is new here in Adobe After Effects CC, kind of at the time of recording, we're in 2018. So without further ado, let's get into making something. So the first step, the first kind of thing you want to do, you want to plan out what you're going to make. So that's work I've already done. So let's just go through this kind of old man example. Uh, I don't really want to go into that weird ghost comment because while we use the same techniques, that's uh, more than I think uh, you've got time for right now. Go ahead and make a new composition and we are going to be using, you know, HDTV, 24 frames a second. None of these numbers are important, but this composition, I'm gonna call the assembly. This is where we're going to assemble the things. And I've also got my essential graphics panel open, which is just taking up space right now. So let me just shrink that down. And let's go ahead and put a circular head out there. I'm just gonna double click the ellipse here and we're gonna just change the size of that ellipse down to a you know, 360 circle. Also, those numbers not important. This is going to be the head. Let me name this. And on the head, we're gonna put some hair, some hairs. And uh, I'm just gonna draw kind of roughly the shape that I intend for us to use. So maybe it's gonna be like, I don't know, let's see, doo -doo, kind of like this. And then maybe it'll have like a, like a curve to it. I don't really know. Curve is gonna come up here like this. And then, uh, you know, it'll, it'll close the thing off. This should have a different kind of color, maybe like that. That's a good color for hair. Let me just refine this a little bit. Let me just refine the front. Refining, this is the part everyone likes to see, really showing how the hot dogs get made around here. All right, so that'll do it for now. So this is the rough kind of shape of the thing. So we want this to be wavy, like the wind is blowing through the hair and it's totally wonderful. So we could just use a distort like the wave warp. We just drop a wave warp on there and kind of, that's sort of what we would want. You know, the problem is that it's deforming everything in the same direction. That's not exactly what we want. We want a sine wave along this line. We want a sine wave along this line. We want a sine wave along the curve back here. Sine waves everywhere, give me that. So the way I would usually make this happen is by creating a new composition that will serve as sort of our, our little pieces that are gonna build this hair. So. It looks like a little bit of work, but once you understand the technique, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna need a piece that goes along the top. It needs to be kind of fixed to the scalp and then get wavy, wavy, wavy as it goes out. So let's make a new composition. Let's make it 2400 by 240. It's a 10 to one, just a long rectangle. You can make it whatever you want, that's fine. But let's name it something we'll be able to find. Let's name it the hair unit. So unit, giant caps, I don't know why I do that, but I do. And so we have this big rectangle. And using some effects, we can go new, solid, make comp size, sure, make it white. And we're gonna apply the wave warp to this. The first thing you notice when you apply the wave warp here is that, you know, it doesn't look quite right. See, it's getting cut off at the top and you might think, well, I'll just move this down. Nope, that's not the answer clearly because there's no layer information up here for the sine wave to be on. So you might uh, apply a mask that would probably do it as well. But what I'll do is use a linear wipe 
and not the preset linear wipe, but the regular linear wipe here. And then to set this to 50, change the angle, and move it above the wave warp. So there, it's cutting it off right there. Wonderful stuff. We've got this thing cut in half. There is layer information right here along the middle. And then we just adjust our height, width, and direction. There we go, so that it's coming from this side. Maybe adjust the speed up to two. Maybe get the height up to 20. You know, this could be 240. Ooh, that's too big. Uh, 120. That's good enough. This is nice and nice and extreme, nice and wavy. And we talked about having the wave kind of stick to the scalp. So we want to pin it, pin it on the right edge and see exactly what happens over here. It is pinned. It's stuck right there on the right edge. Now, something else you'll notice is this doesn't look great. So we might uh, increase this to a high high anti-aliasing that's usually a good move you know something to think about our wave unit here is almost completely done uh, what we will do is also duplicate the white solid and remove the wave warp just moving it under and uh, setting this to like 75 so we've got this nice hard bottom down here this is our wave unit this is the piece of the hair that we're going to put and create the entire hair piece out of this. How does that work? Well, that's a good question because that's where we're going next. So here in the assembly space, let's bring out some of these hair units. So I'm going to bring those hair units out. I'm going to move the anchor point of this thing using the pan behind tool over here, snapping it right there. And we're going to assemble this sort of along the, uh, along the scalp area here. So maybe we just shrink this down to like 50%. That's good. So that's lining up kind of where we want it. I might use a mask here to just kind of define out, you know, I only want this much of it. And then I'll probably duplicate this. And as you can see, my adaptive resolution is being very helpful. So let me just turn that off. And so I've duplicated, I got the hair unit. I'm gonna layer, transform, you know, flip vertically, uh, you know, move it like so, ooh, neat. So it's gonna go like right around here, all right. And I'm just gonna adjust this shape a little bit. I like a nice, you know, a nice firm 45 degree. I don't think we need to look at the head anymore. We're only concerned about the hair. Perfect, wonderful. So I think that's looking good. And you might need to trim up this a little bit. You never know what you'll have to do specifically to make it work for you, but this is looking pretty good, so. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit, kind of like that. All right, duck this down and move this down. I'm holding Alt so I can sweep this below. Again, we're going to do the same kind of thing over here. Boop. Just going to pull this like so, and we'll touch up. We will touch up this these curves uh, a little in a little bit. Don't worry, we'll get to it. We will get to it. So we'll do that right now. Just kind of make sure that this is lining up. Beep, 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 boop, 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 right there. And so, don't need to look at the head anymore. So we've got these two parts here. It doesn't look like much yet. Don't worry, we're getting there. Um, but maybe we wanna just extend this down just a little bit. So this is more of a circular thing. Perfect. So we've got the uh, this top line, that looks correct. The bottom line, that looks correct. Let's bring out another hair unit here, hair unit, and we're gonna scale that down, kind of scale it into place. Again, 50% scale on this and, and move it roughly where we want it to be. Now, the trouble is it's not curved. We need to curve this thing. So what I would like to do is use a Bezier warp. I can just apply that to this thing. So we got a wave warp and now we're Bezier warping. Things are getting real warped out here. And rather than adding the way I've done with these two, I'm going to subtract this unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it around this away. So the solid part is over here. And I'm gonna set it to be a silhouette alpha. So it's gonna, it's gonna cut a hole in this thing. So let's just have a look at it while we do what we wanna do. We wanna kind of bend it into position. So we are bending it using these handles. Look at me go, bending, bending, bending. So good, bend, bend, bend. It's bending very nicely. I think I'm happy with that. Great, it's not perfect, but what are you gonna do? It is close enough. And now we just kind of line that up, grab that thing, and we go mode, silhouette alpha, and ka-chunk, takes a big bite, takes a big bite out of this thing, awesome. 
and just move it into place. You might need to massage it around a little bit. And again, you can adjust your masks here so that nothing uh, untoward is poking out. If you don't want it to, you might need to adjust uh, this shape here so that it's you know, filling in the gap fully. And where's that other one? Here we go. Just get that pinched in a little bit. Here we go. Perfect. And you'll probably want to play it back just to make sure nothing weird and wavy is poking out. And that is pretty much it. We've created this hair. Here's something else that I'll say while we're in this comp. You know how we talked about master properties a little bit? Well, here's where that comes into play. Let's say we want this back hair unit to go faster, slower, have a greater frequency, greater amplitude. Well, we can go into the hair unit. We can set the master. We can set the master of our, oh, come on, grab me that window. There we go. We set the master of the essential graphics to be the hair unit, that thing that we're working in. And then if we solo the supported properties, we could grab on here the wave height, wave width, and speed, and throw those all into the essential graphics. Okay, now with that done, now out here on the individual hair units, we can see the master properties are out here. We can change the wave height to be 40. Ooh, and it updates. We can change the width to be, you know, way less. It could be like 80. Ooh, look at that. So we can change all these things and they only update the one we're changing. Pretty good, right? Also out here, we might say, well, you know, looking at the master properties, I really think the wave height needs to be 25 or something. Then you can push that change to the master comp and it updates the other ones. So maybe you're like, oh, I think it should be 10. You know, then you can push that up. Or you might update this and then you might say, no, no, I need to revert it back to the original. You hit the revert here and you're back. So that is how you can push these changes. You notice this hair unit, the, the back part of the hair, didn't update because we had typed in our own little custom update to the height so it won't change. So that's, that's how Master Properties is helping us make little customizable blocks that we can use out here. I will say things are going to get a little bit weird if you go ahead and turn on collapse transformations in here. So just maybe don't do that uh, and you can get along just fine. What we've got here are our hair. Our hair is looking very good. So what I think we should do is pre-compose the hair. Now we're gonna pre-compose it for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna collect all the hair of this hair piece together. And the other reason is that I don't want uh, my circle here, I don't want the circle to sort of be affected or anything else to be affected by this, this silhouette that's going on here. So I'm just gonna pre-compose these and call this the hair piece because this is you know, the hairpiece, the wig, that's what's going on. There's something else I want to update. I want to fix about this hairpiece. I don't like how jagged, how pointy things are here. So what I can do is I could apply a Gaussian or Gaussian, however you pronounce that word, blur to this thing and then clamp down on its alpha. But I don't want to do this universally to the whole thing. So let me show you what that means. So I would do a Gauss, Gaussian blur, here we go. Kick that up to like 40. And then I would use a curves, use curves out here, and then apply that to the alpha so that the alpha is going like, whoa, it's going like this. And now it's nice and sharp alpha. But then, you know, ultimately I'm going to use sort of a fill on this uh, so that I can get the color I want or the ramp that I want or whatever. And now it looks all good. So these just got rounded up and maybe we rounded even more 50 and keep rounding, keep rounding. But this front part here is also now rounded. And that's, that's not what I was looking for. I don't want to do the whole thing. Now we could use a series of masks if we want to. So we could use a mask and we just say, all right, this is the part. Maybe this is the part that we apply these Gaussian, Gaussian blurs and curves to. So we can go in here. We can go to the compositing options. We can add little compositing options for those. So it's only applying it back here. But I will say that we do end up with this kind of hard line, this little whoopsie line that goes in here, which is not super good. We could feather that out, but it still has a little dent in it, right? So it's not exactly what I'm into. So let me just shut those off and pretend that didn't happen. What I'm going to do is go into this layer. Again, this is the hair piece. I'm going to make a new adjustment layer. 
we might call this uh, the smoothing layer. And we're gonna use this layer to do the same thing. So again, it's a curves. We're gonna need a curves out there. We need a Gaussian blur out there. And we just do the same thing. So, you know, again, it was 50. Then we go into the alpha and we crunch this up. I know it's hard to see because this is a black line on a black background and that's not super good, but we do that. And an adjustment layer is like a lens that you put over things. So what I can do, thanks to this wonderful lens, is then use the pen tool to just kind of select the area that I want it to apply to. It is now applied there. You still have this kind of hard line, but you can feather that out. You can just feather this out, maybe 20 pixels or something. And then, you know, you don't notice it as much. This hard line also helps you to kind of refine your curves here a little bit. You know, if you need to get this a little bit tighter to make the two make the two sides kind of match a little bit more in the way they look, I don't know. If you don't want to use curves, if you want something a little bit more precise but less curvy, you can use a levels. You can drop a levels out there. And then again, you go to the alpha and uh, whoa, that's pretty insane. Uh, input white, but then you would just crunch these things together near the middle point exactly just like so i prefer curves it's just a little bit easier to use curves and quite frankly this little bump you won't even notice it if you're putting textures on and all that stuff so it's tough to get rid of the bump but it can be done as well you could also be applying things like uh, you could be applying your your fills in here gradient ramps all that stuff you could be applying it in here as well so we've got this hair piece Hair pieces is over the uh, over the layer here. I think that's pretty nice. You might want to do things like kind of smoothing out this situation here. Wonderful. And you just got to be just got to be a little bit careful. But now we have this wonderful red uh, thing going on. This this hair piece. It's wavy. It's undulating. It's uh, performing the way we said it would on the tin. And uh, the rest of it is kind of up to you. But again, if you want to have these things expand, contract, if you want the waves to become more severe, less severe, all of that is in here on the master properties of each of these things. And all of these are animatable. You can put keyframes on the height, on the width, on the speed, all changeable, all wonderful. So hopefully that kind of gets you where you want to go and you make interesting undulating waves out of this stuff. I'd love to see what you make. So, uh, you know, post it up when you've got it. Congratulations, you've completed the tutorial. Good for you. If you ran into trouble in the tutorial, please let me know in the comments. I will try to get you through as best I can. Uh, if you want to get your hands on the project file, like we said earlier in the tutorial, then uh, available at evanadams.com. Links to that in the cards, in the description, all the good stuff. If you like learning about motion graphics, After Effects, if you like hearing the sound of my voice, subscribe to this channel. Uh, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. And if you do all that stuff, then when I upload new content, you will find it, which is, uh, that's what we both want, right? I guess. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you have troubles, reach out to me at EC Abrams on Twitter. Hit me up in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will see you around the internet. Thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.